Well, good morning. A study through the Gospel of Luke today is part 73, and we are in Luke 20, verses 27 through 40. If you want to follow along in your Bible, your smartphone, or your tablet. The Sadducees and the Resurrection, Luke 20 and verse 27. Some of the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came up and questioned him. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother has a wife and dies childless, his brother should take the wife and produce offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children. Also the second. And the third took her, and in the same way all seven died and left no children. Finally, the woman died too. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For all seven had married her. Jesus told them, The children of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are counted worthy to take part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage for they no longer die because they are like angels and are children of God since they are children of the resurrection Moses even indicated in the passage about the burning bush that the dead are raised where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob he is not the God of the dead but of the living, because all are living to him. Some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well. And they no longer dared to ask him anything. Now, if you were with us last week, and if you weren't, why not? Another group of religious leaders also asked Jesus a question. And that question came from the religious group that's known as the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the religious conservatives. And the question they asked Jesus was Luke 20, 22. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now their motive for asking Jesus this question was to get him into trouble. They were trying to trick Jesus into saying something bad about the Roman government, but it didn't work. Verse 23. But detecting their craftiness, he said to them, show me a denarius. Whose image and inscription does it have? Caesar's, they said. Well, then he told them, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And Jesus took this opportunity to teach all of us an important lesson that the Christian the Christ follower should always be a good citizen and do their civic duty you should obey the laws you should pay your taxes and yes you should vote and that as we follow Jesus we live our lives ultimately under the authority of God But God requires us to also be under the authority of our government. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And to God the things that are God's. That was Jesus' answer to the Pharisees, the religious conservatives. Now today, another group is taking their shot at Jesus. And they are the religious liberals. This group was known as the Sadducees. The Sadducees, the religious liberals, were in opposition to the Pharisees, the religious conservatives. The conservatives and the liberals disagreed with each other on just about everything, and they fought all of the time. You know, some things never change. It seemed that the only thing the conservatives and the liberals could agree on was that they hated Jesus. And they were willing to unite for a short time in order to destroy him. Verse 27. Some of the Sadducees who say there is no 
resurrection. Now, immediately, we are introduced to a theological problem. The Sadducees, a group of religious leaders, did not believe in the resurrection from the dead. Now, that's a big problem because Jesus believed in the resurrection from the dead. Not only did Jesus believe it, he experienced it. Luke 24, verse 7, Jesus said, The Son of Man must be handed over to sinful people, be crucified, and rise from the dead on the third day. If there is no resurrection, then we have no Easter. If there is no resurrection, then we have no hope. We must believe in the resurrection. Jesus believed in the resurrection. And it's always a smart move to side with the guy who rose from the dead. The Sadducees chose the wrong side of this argument. They were a powerful religious and also political group in Israel. The word Sadducee comes from a Hebrew word that means to be righteous. Now in their case, they thought they were righteous. And they wanted to be seen as righteous. But their life did not live up to their name. The nation of Israel was under the control of the Roman government at that time. The Sadducees were a political group as well as a religious group. And they worked hard at keeping the peace with Rome. But the Sadducees had some unusual theological views. They believed that the authority of Scripture was found only in the books of Moses. The first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They believed that all truth was found in the books of Moses. That if Moses didn't say it, they didn't believe it. Now, it's that kind of belief system that is very dangerous. It's that kind of belief system that creates cults and false teaching. That's when someone selectively chooses Scripture but leaves out other Scripture in order to meet their own needs and their own beliefs. That's exactly what cult leaders like Jim Jones and David Koresh and Charles Manson did. They abused and they misused Scripture for their own good. Beware of false teachers. They are everywhere. There are people who can prove just about anything they want to prove by taking Scripture out of its proper context. Scripture always supports Scripture. God will never tell you to do anything that is not supported by Scripture. And because of their distorted scriptural views, the Sadducees were very proud and very independent. They thought that they were so righteous. They were so righteous that they did not need God in their everyday life. They thought they had everything under control. But before we get too critical of the Sadducees, self-righteous church people do the same thing all of the time. Now, because the Sadducees believed that Moses did not teach the resurrection, they did not believe in the resurrection from the dead. They did not believe that there is an afterlife. They believed that the body and the soul died together at the same time. They did not believe in a spiritual world, so they believed angels and demons do not exist. So what did they believe? They believed that this earthly life is all there is. And so the only thing that matters was to live for today. The Sadducees could have cared less about Jesus. 
until it looked like he might attract negative attention from the government of Rome. They could not allow Jesus to mess up their political party. They could not allow that apple cart to be upset. So the Sadducees joined forces with the Pharisees and they came up with a plan to put Jesus to death. So in our text today, we see a sneak attack of the Sadducees against the scriptural authority of Jesus. Verse 27. Some of the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came up and questioned him. So the Sadducees create this crazy story in an attempt to make Jesus look bad in front of the people. Verse 28. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother has a wife and dies childless, his brother should take the wife and produce offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children. Also the second and the third took her. In the same way, all seven died and left no children. Finally, the woman died too. In the resurrection, therefore, Whose wife will the woman be? For all seven had married her. Now this story is based on a law in the Old Testament called the kinsman redeemer or the leveret marriage. This is in scripture as part of the old covenant. But just like cults often do, they are taking one part of scripture and twisting it so it will go against another teaching in Scripture that they disagree with. They were trying to use the law of leveret marriage to attack the truth of the resurrection. Actually, they were attacking the authority of the Scriptures. And Jesus gives them an amazing answer. Verse 34, Jesus told them, the children of this age marry and are given in marriage. In other words, on earth, many people choose to get married. But things are not the same in the afterlife. Things are different in the resurrection. Verse 35, Jesus said, But those who are counted worthy to take part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. In other words, those who put their trust in Jesus have eternal life. In eternity, in heaven, people will not marry each other. There is a difference between heaven and life on earth. Things are not the same. In heaven, in the resurrection, in eternity, Jesus is teaching there is no marriage. Marriage is an earthly relationship, not a heavenly relationship. Verse 36, Jesus said, For they can no longer die because they are like angels and are children of God, since they are children of the resurrection. In heaven, in the resurrection, in eternity, there is no more death. Thank God for that. We cannot die in eternity. We will be like the angels. Now, we do not become angels. Our heavenly transformed existence is so much better than the angels. We will be higher than the angels because we are children of God. But we will be like the angels in some ways. Our loyalty, our commitment... Our worship will not be to a marriage partner. Our loyalty, our commitment, our worship is completely for God and for God alone. And we can only imagine what that will be like. So the Sadducees did not understand the difference between our earthly existence and our heavenly existence existence. Jesus exposed another problem of the Sadducees in verse 37. Moses even indicated in the passage about the burning bush that the dead are raised, where he calls the Lord 
the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living because all are living to him. It's interesting that Jesus chose to quote the same guy that the Sadducees quoted, Moses. Jesus reminded them of a story that every Jewish person knew and knew very well, the burning bush. That's where God spoke to Moses. Moses said that God Almighty was the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. No Jewish person could deny that truth. Jesus goes on to say that God is God of the living and not the dead. Moses even indicated in the passage about the burning bush that the dead are raised where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living because all are living to him. Without the truth of the resurrection, this truth in Scripture would not be possible. Even the self-righteous, always right Sadducees could not deny this truth. Verse 39, some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well. And they no longer dared to ask him anything. The Sadducees were very proud of their logical and rational thinking. They thought they had the answer for everything. They denied the supernatural and they denied the resurrection from the dead. But Jesus went beyond logic and assured them that the resurrection is real and that God is supernatural. So what's our bottom line? We need to beware of false teachers. Angels are real. The afterlife is real. We can all have real hope because there is a future resurrection. The foundation of our faith is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the resurrection that gives us peace in the middle of the storm. God is who he said he is. And he will do what he said he will do. Jesus rose from the dead. You better believe it. Jesus is alive today. Let's pray.